So, you know, to just run into someone after all those years, to just say that you're my father. Sleeping on my chest at night, uh, just everything. I, I mean, I barely move. I mean, you know, like I would sleep like this, bare, real quiet, real move, real. I, I know feel. that move. And so when you saw this beautiful baby, you said, this is my grandbaby? I just knew that she was my granddaughter. I had been dreaming about her for days. Ms. Quiller, you are here seeking DNA results to determine the father of your three-year-old daughter, Nora. So Ms. Quiller is here to justify who the father of her three-year-old daughter is, while on the other side is Ms. Briggs, who has totally different things to say. Ms. Briggs, you are Nora's possible grandmother. You claim your son had no idea he may have fathered a child with the plaintiff. In fact, you say he never even mentioned having sexual relations with Ms. Quiller, nor that she was potentially pregnant with his child. Yes, Your Honor. Further, Ms. Quiller explains to the judge her relationship with Jones and how the scenario has been thus far. Not to have relations with one another, and that particular night we did. That's why it happened that one time. So it was one night? Yes, ma'am. And that's it? Yes, ma'am. This wasn't a relationship that continued on? No, ma'am. Miss Briggs breaks down while telling something to Judge Lauren. <laughs> it was like an electric shock went through my body like it was meant to be. <laughs> the shocking thing comes when Quiller tells she has slept with two other guys too, and this further adds to the confusion. You say you got two other men tested. Yes, ma'am. And today you feel like it's your last hope. Yes, ma'am. Why? I feel like Nora deserves to know who her father is. Um, I had the opportunity to meet my father when I was 17, and we, we have each other's number, and we still don't conversate with one another. But the situation intensifies when Miss Briggs gets to know how it happened. You have to see this. So, when I spoke, when I spoke with her, <sighs> take your time. I know it's painful. <sighs> when I spoke with her and told her it's a possibility that Charlie could be the father of my child, she looked at her and she picked her up and she just burst into tears. It was such a heart-rending, painful situation that Quiller possibly could not control her tears. She told you that her son... She looked at her and she said, this is my grandbaby. But Miss Briggs had almost forever wanted a grandchild. She was longing for that relationship, but will it happen? And so when you saw this beautiful baby, you said, this is my grandbaby? I just knew that she was my granddaughter. I had been dreaming about her for days. <laughs> So is Miss Briggs the real grandma or not? Well, let's take a look at the results. It has been determined by this court. Miss Briggs, you are not her grandmother. <laughs> so sorry. This is a tearful breakdown moment for both Quiller and Briggs, and of course, for different reasons. <laughs> Hope Jones finds the peace he deserves. Mr. Robinson, after a 12-year relationship with the defendant, she confessed that your three-year-old son, Brandon Jr., may not be your biological child. Now yes, you say your engagement to Miss Fuller is broken off and your heart is in ruins yes, because of the possibility you may now lose your son too. Yes, Your Honor. Well, this listing is somewhat crazy. Imagine claiming that your own child is not your biological child. But wait till you hear the other side. Miss Fuller, you admit that you were indeed sleeping with another man at the time Brandon Jr. was conceived. Yes, Your Honor. Furthermore, you acknowledge you hid your doubts about paternity from Mr. Robinson. Yes, Your Honor. This case looks really serious. I wonder how they would take it forward and resolve it. 
Mr. Robinson, you are asking the court to award you $100 to pay the fee to change Brandon Jr.'s name if indeed the results reveal you are not his father yes. and you have to move on without yes, him. Yes, Your Honor. But there are so many details that are missing here, and it looks like it's now time for some clarification. He, um, I, Where were you that whole week? I had left to go be with the guy that I thought that the, wow. could be his father. After knowing this, Fuller was moved to tears. The feeling she had was beyond guilty. Do you feel sorry for her, or would you berate her? While you think about that, this is what happened next. My conscience was getting to me, and I couldn't like look at him every day. And and I lied to him like all this time. But it's been six years with the baby, and this is how Robinson feels. Sleeping on my chest at night, uh, just everything. I, I mean, I barely move. I mean, you know, like I would sleep like this, bare, real quiet, real move, real. I, I know feel. that move. And together with Brandon Jr., Mr. Robinson has a whole story to tell about how things went ahead in life. Brandon changed my life. I was on my, I was on my way to. I was on my way to some bad things. When he was born, it's just like, I gotta stop. But something happened when things started falling out and the secret was revealed. She got on, on um, social media on my phone, okay, but didn't close it, forgot to close it. So I'm sitting on the couch, I, I'm about to jump on my Facebook, but I'm looking at posts, my social media or whatever, I'm looking at posts like, wait a minute, this ain't mine, you know what I'm saying? So instantly I get, kind of nosy, you know what I mean? And I start going in inboxes, reading inboxes. So I'm reading these inboxes. But the suspense grew grave when a particular message was read by Robinson. But she sent the one uh, message to the guy and I guess that's when she went to go live with the guy. Okay. Saying that he didn't look anything like me and that she needed his help. You saw a message that basically said the baby doesn't look anything like Brandon Sr. Right. So I need your help. Need your help. And the only thing that can solve this issue is the DNA result we have all been waiting for. So let's check it out. Mr. Brandon Robinson Sr. You are his father. <laughs> and thus justice was served. Mr. Wheat, you filed your case because you claim you've been robbed as a father. You are desperate to prove to the defendant that you fathered her 19-year-old daughter, Sierra Sloan, and once you do, you want to make up for lost time. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So Mr. Wheat has been robbed as a father, and he has been desperate to get justice. But let's hear the other side. Ms. Grider, you say, as much as you would like the plaintiff to be your daughter's biological father, facts are facts, and he isn't her dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The facts somewhere prove that he isn't the dad of the 19-year-old daughter, but this is what we're here for. And the daughter claims to be the victim amidst all the chaos, and we can't blame her. Ms. Sloan, you say you are the victim in this paternity chaos and deserve to know who your dad is. is yes, Your Honor. Mr. Witt explains how and why he has missed out on all the important moments. You've missed the important moments? Yes, Explain. Your Honor. School, trips, you know, being a family, you know, that I missed out on. All right. But Greider can't really recall who the actual father is, so she talks about the time she was pregnant. Take me back to the moment you found out you were pregnant. I confronted Mac and David and told them, told all of them, all so four of them. You really. told them all? Yes. Listen, I'm pregnant and You could I've... possibly be the father, yes. I've told all four of them. But what happened when Mr. Wheat got to know Greider was pregnant? I was pretty much in shock at the time. You know, I didn't process it yet. And so, but wait, I mean, at the point that she tells you you could possibly be the father, you now stand in court and say you were robbed. I'm trying to figure out what happened in between that point and this point, how you got robbed. Did she rob you? Did you rob yourself? Did the circumstance rob you? 
Here comes a third person in the picture that Grider was with when her daughter was born. Who was with you when she was born? Mac Grider. Ah, now I get it. So the man you were with went through the process with you. Yes, Your Honor. And that's when Mr. Weed has something really interesting to reveal. She called me that day and told me, and I told her I'll come up there in a little bit, okay? Well, my family went up there. I called her back, said, hey, I'm on my way. She told me not to bother. So I just... Oh, now I get where the robbery's coming. Grider clarifies more about the birth certificates. What happens next, Ms. Grider? Who signs the birth certificate? Does anybody sign the birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. Mac Grider did. And it's been on and off drama for 19 years, so. Well, only the true results of DNA can resolve all this chaos. And this is what the results looked like. Mr. Wheat, you are not the father. And the final results really made Sloan cry her heart out. Ms. Andrews, you claim that while at a restaurant recently, you were shocked when Mr. Glenn approached you out of the blue and raised his pant leg to reveal a tattoo of your name on his leg. Now let's hear Mr. Glenn's side of the story. Mr. Glenn, you confess you kept a 30-year secret because a good family raised Ms. Andrews and you didn't want to interfere with that. That's right, Your Honor. Andrew shares more about her relationship with her father. And what was your relationship with your father, the man you were told was your father? What I, was that like? I had a great relationship with my father. Although I did not live in the same household as he, mm -hmm. he came around, um, he attended family reunions, he done things for me. He was even at my graduation, my high school graduation. He was at my college uh, graduation as well. But while talking about her story, she breaks down. So, you know, to just run into someone after all those years, to just say that you're my father. It's now time for Mr. Glenn to clear out all the doubts. You were in a relationship with Ms. Andrews' mother. Right, right. You left town. Yes, I left town. By the time you come back, she had a baby. Right, right. But she didn't never, she didn't never tell me but that. But she, she never came and told you that she was pregnant. Now that's a really big secret that has to come out. Okay, I'm curious to hear further. So you calculated up yeah, the time yeah, and you yeah, felt yeah, like yeah, that yeah. I could be the father. Right. And I that's when you confronted her mother. Yes. And this led to an intense discussion between the two. Why would you wait till my father passed? Was, Why? Don't you already had a feeling that I was no, part of uh, so, No, I never yeah, had a feeling that, no, that's not uh, true, no, you I heard have never, the ever. Fat, did your sister tell you that? My father is the yeah, father that attended graduations you, yeah, and birth yeah, of my children. That's a father not on a penis to Glenn. Too, but I couldn't, Mr. I couldn't. Glenn. Andrews cannot agree with Glenn, and to make her point, she then shows something. And it was a little confusing when the cousin came to me with that information that that's not my father, that was six months before he passed. Well, amidst all this chaos, the judge is left with the DNA test results, and now is the time to reveal the results. Mr. Glenn, you are Oh my God. Andrew's heart is clearly broken into pieces. No! 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 Everyone deserves to have closure.